Now, from the News Channel 5 Network, this is Medical Mondays. Good evening, everyone. Welcome to Medical Monday. I am so excited about this show because I think I could fill the next hour with questions, but this show is about you, so feel free to call in. We're going to get those calls started. Tonight's topic, we're calling it All About Skin. Our guest here, a dermatologist, Dr. Binlin. Dr. Binlin, thank you for being here. Thank you so much for having me here. I am very excited to be able to share my information about skin and everything about skin with you. When I was reading over all the materials, I was kind of floored by how much you cover in your practice as a dermatologist. It's very much the medical side of things, but also the cosmetic side of things, and you guys cover a lot of ground when between those two sides. Right, uh, you're absolutely right. There seems to be a lot, but really, um, the field of dermatology encompasses all conditions related to the skin, hair, and nails. So not only do we treat conditions that are considered diseases mm -hmm. of the skin and hair and nails, but we also are very involved with the health of skin, hair, and nails, and that's where we get into things that uh, are more cosmetic mm -hmm. and aesthetic as well. We are taking your calls tonight. I told you I could fill this next hour with questions, so I have plenty, but I know you do too. We're talking everything from acne to skin cancer to Botox, fillers, all sorts of things tonight. So if you have a question, go ahead and give us a call right now. We're going to get those lined up. 615-737-PLUS is the number to call. Also on Facebook tonight, we've already had two people chime in with Facebook questions. I'm probably going to get to those first. In fact, Let's just start with the question. Stephanie Brown wrote in on Facebook, um, new treatment for eczema. Is there a new treatment that's out there? Uh, yes, there is. Uh, in the past, uh, the tr traditional treatments have been things such as uh, topical rub-on mm -hmm. steroids, and there are also some oral medications. However, what's really exciting now is that there are new treatment options that include a topical medication called Eucresa, that's not a steroid, so we don't worry about thinning of the skin. We don't worry about causing any uh, possible acne-like reactions that are due to use of topical steroids. Mm. And then there's also going to be a new medicine that's an injectable medicine for severe eczema, and that is just coming out. So the field of dermatology continues to evolve with new innovations that will be very exciting for people who are suffering from eczema. And let me back up that just a little bit. What is eczema? Okay, eczema is a genetic condition that causes people to get rashes very easily. And their skin is much more sensitive. Their skin also stays dry very easily because they are lacking certain proteins in the skin mm. that helps and uh, that helps the skin stay well moisturized so that it can act as an intact barrier to outside irritants and chemicals. Um, now, eczema can also be associated with hay fever, asthma, and so we see that also commonly. Um, also, eczema can also be triggered by environmental factors, uh, including a lot of times chemicals that are in routine skincare products oh. that people don't think about. But people who have eczema can become allergic to some of those ingredients and there are over 3,000 chemicals out there that can act as a allergen and so in the right circumstances people with eczema mm -hmm. will develop an allergy to ingredients in their own skincare products. At some point in the next hour I'm going to ask you what are the things that we should be doing to our skin or putting on our skin and what are some of those things out there in the market that we should avoid at all costs. Uh, so that's going to come perfect. but we have people also on the line. Let's go to Casey right away. Casey go ahead with your question. Thanks for calling in tonight. Yeah I was wanting to know what's the difference between fillers and how can they be used? Okay, great question. Uh, right, so with fillers, uh, fillers fill and they're used in the cosmetic dermatology realm to help replace missing volume. And typically we're talking about using fillers on the face. Mm -hmm. uh, it used to be that there was only collagen and collagen used to be derived off of uh, cow sources and people had to have skin testing for that. To make sure they weren't allergic? That, exactly. Now there are different classes of fillers. So one large class is called the hyaluronic acid 
products, which are sugar-based molecules. And so those things are very safe. The risk for any allergic reaction is extremely low. Uh, and they typically last anywhere between four months to some products that can last up to a year and a half to two years. Oh, wow. So very long duration. Um, it's also very safe in the sense that if people get a filler put in their face with a hyaluronic acid product, and if for whatever reason they don't like it, we can actually use another product called hyaluronidase that basically dissolves the product. So if they, okay. don't, if they have a reaction or maybe say, oh, I wasn't going for this look, it can be corrected, exactly. so to speak. Exactly, exactly. And then also there are other types of fillers that can also be longer lasting. Uh, another type of product that can be used is something called Bellafill. Uh, which actually uses a particular type of plastic that has been FDA approved to be used for correction of uh, volume loss on the face as well as acne scarring. And that product can last up to five years in individuals. Wow. So it's a uh, long-term uh, correction. Uh, and then we also have fillers such as Sculptra, which I call a dynamic filler because after a series of injection, it actually forms a lattice work inside your tissue hmm. and stimulates your own tissue to create new collagen. So you get a gradual natural filling of volume loss. And common areas in which we'll use fillers are typically along here, the nasolabial fold. We'll use it here, what we call the marionette lines. We will use it also up in the temples where people have hollowing of the temples mm -hmm. with time. And also another interesting area that we'll use it in, uh, a lot of people complain about um, dark circles yes. underneath the eyes. And a lot of times that has to do with also volume loss with time. Hmm. So when used judiciously in the cheek and tear trough area, we can actually recreate the volume that typically younger people have through here so that you don't have as deep of a dark circle, which is caused by a shadowing effect. Very interesting. Yeah. Casey, thank you for calling in with your question. Let's check in with Jeremy. Jeremy, what's your question tonight? Oh, Jenny, I'm sorry. Jenny, go ahead. I can't even read my own writing. That's pretty bad. <laughs> uh, I'm calling for a relative, and okay. she developed blotchy red lesions on her legs several years ago. Saw a dermatologist at that time who called it vasculitis dermatitis. Um, he said the only thing to treat it with was some type of cancer drug, and she mm. chose not to do that. So I'm wondering, is this something that a dermatologist should be treating, or should she see somebody, maybe an internist with a specialty? Right, so um, uh, that's a very um, intriguing question, and it's not as straightforward because there are many causes of, I think what you're referring to is vasculitis which is inflammation of blood vessels. Uh, dermatologists uh, are also very skilled at treating vasculitis because a lot of times vasculitis can be caused by autoimmune conditions. They can also be caused by drugs. They can be caused by infections. And it comes down to figuring out, hopefully, what is the cause. And once you can figure out what is the cause, then you can choose the appropriate treatment. So it's not always going to be treatment with drugs that are um, high-powered chemotherapy type mm -hmm. medicine. It can be treated by eliminating the underlying cause of vasculitis. Uh, so I would recommend uh, that, um, I think you said it was one of your relatives, relative, yes, yeah. that uh, they may get a second um, opinion. Uh, maybe from another dermatologist, um, and if they can provide all the previous medical records, it would always be helpful to review the okay. um, the records and determine what needs to be done next. Great. All right, tonight is all about your skin. We're taking a lot more phone calls, more Facebook questions right when we come back, so don't go anywhere.